OOP and functional programming both say they'll make your code better, but use the wrong one, your project turns into spaghetti. Let's break down when OOP fails, when FP wins, and when you should mix them. Welcome to the channel. Let's fix this mess to really see how OOP and FP are different. Let's compare them side by side with the same basic functionality from the outside. We'll go through three examples. Number one, a simple user authentication system, OOP versus FP design. Number two, Data transformation, how OOP and FP process lists differently. Number three, a logging system, stateful versus stateless approaches. Each one will look the same from the outside, but the internal structure, maintainability, and flexibility will be completely different. Example one, user authentication, OOP versus FP design. Our goal is to check if a user exists and validate their password. The OOP approach, it uses a user class to store state, username and password. It encapsulates behavior within methods. It relies on object instances to store data. The advantages? Encapsulation. The password hash is private and protected. The check password method makes sure logic stays within the object. The disadvantages? It's harder to test because the logic is tied to object state. If we need multiple auth strategies like OAuth, API keys, we have to modify the class, which violates the open-close principle. The FP approach, no classes, no stored state, just pure functions. The authentication logic is separate from the data. The advantages, it's easier to test because functions don't rely on state. It's more flexible. We can swap out hash easily without modifying objects. The disadvantages, no encapsulation. Data can be accidentally exposed or modified. It's harder to enforce rules like users should only modify their own password. Real world takeaway, use OOP if your authentication system needs user sessions and permissions. Use FP if you just need a stateless API verifying passwords. Example number two, data transformation, processing a list of numbers. The goal is given a list of numbers, we want to filter out negatives and double the remaining values. The OOP approach uses an object to store state and apply transformation. It encapsulates logic inside a processor class. The advantages, we have encapsulation. Once numbers are set, they don't get modified directly. It works well in object heavy architectures like large applications. The disadvantages, it creates unnecessary state. It stores the numbers when it could be stateless. It's harder to test since data is tied to object properties. The FP approach, it uses our pure function instead of objects. It is stateless. There's no object to hold numbers, just functions transforming data. The advantages, well, it's a lot simpler. There's no need for a class. It's easier to test. Just check the function output. The disadvantages, well, it lacks structure. If we need more transformations, we might end up chaining functions. It could lead to complex expressions. The real world takeaway, use OOP when transformations involve complex objects and workflows. Use FP when working with pure data, like batch processing or analytics. Example number three, logging system, OOP versus state management. The goal here is to create a logging system where messages are stored and retrieved. The OOP approach, it uses a class with state to manage logs. It provides methods to interact with the log. The advantages, it has encapsulated state. Other parts of the program can't modify logs directly. It's good for systems that need log persistence, like monitoring tool. The disadvantages, it requires an instance. Managing multiple instances can get messy. It's also not inherently thread safe. You have multiple threads that can modify logs unpredictably. The FP approach, it uses immutable data structures, not stateful objects. Each function returns a new log list instead of modifying an existing one. The advantages, where there's no shared state, each function call operates on its own data. It's thread safe. FP avoids mutation, so concurrency issues disappear. The disadvantages, it's more memory hungry. Every log call creates a new list instead of modifying an existing one. It's not great for large logs. It could slow down with big data sets. Real world takeaway, use OOP for persistent logs that need structured access. Use FP for stateless event logs like analytics. So the comparison, well, the first thing is state handling. In object-oriented programming, objects store state. It means that each object carries its own data and behavior. This makes it easier to model real-world entities, but can lead to complex state management. In functional programming, 
functions operate on data rather than storing state. Data is technically immutable, which simplifies reasoning about code and avoids unintended side effects. Number two, code organization. OOP relies on encapsulation and method. It means that data and behavior are bundled together inside the object. That approach promotes modular design, but sometimes it'll lead to deeply nested class structures. It can get very messy. FP encourages pure function and composition, where functions operate independently and can be easily combined. This means a more declarative style, which reduces dependencies between the components. Number three, flexibility. OOP can be harder to modify because changes often require altering multiple interconnected objects. FP is easier to swap logic because functions are independent and interchangeable, which makes the code base more adaptable to change. Number four, testing. OOP testing requires mocks and setup because objects depend on internal state and external dependencies. FP functions are pure and easy to test because they always return the same output for a given input. That reduces the need for complex test setup. Number five, performance. OOP incurs overhead from objects and method calls, which can slow down execution, especially in big applications. FP is usually more efficient because it avoids unnecessary state changes. However, garbage collection can be a bit of a concern, especially in languages with heavy memory allocation. Number six, Thread safety. OOP requires locks or synchronization to handle concurrent access to shared objects. That means more complexity and performance bottlenecks. FP avoids that because there's no shared state, which makes it naturally thread safe and ideal for parallel computing. Well, OOP is better when you need encapsulation, like banking, user management, when your system is heavily structured, like web apps and APIs, when stateful behavior is important, like games and GUI apps. FP is better when you need pure transformation, like batch data processing, analytics. Your code should be stateless and easy to parallelize. You want simpler, testable functions, scripts, or small utilities. The best approach? Mix both. Use OOP for structure, FP for logic.